Hey guys, Jason back for another Stature Review. Uh, today I'm going to be reviewing XM Studios Magdalena, or the Magdalena, uh, as she's called. Um, the other uh, day I reviewed a piece that I thought was uh, basically one of the most underrated pieces there is, which is XM Studios Black Cat. And uh, in the theme of that, as I'm starting to put some of my statues away and uh, box them up for moving, uh, I wanted to do another piece that uh, is not a new piece, it's an older piece, but is one that I also believe to be one of the most underrated statues, at least that I have. Um, definitely, uh, in my opinion, one of the most underrated statues uh, uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the hobby. So uh, that is XM Studios Magdalena. So um, a lot of people might sort of be in the same position I was, um, which is not really knowing who Magdalena is uh, uh, when it comes to uh, her role in, in comic books. Um, I personally, you know, I don't usually do this, but I bought this statue literally just because I thought she looked so badass. I, I just really loved her look. I'm a huge Castlevania fan, and uh, I just felt like she had that Castlevania vibe, the sort of um, the Catholic Church uh, 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 motif and the colors with the with the golds and the red and the and the and the black and that sort of like a bit of gothic look but of course also she's a beautiful uh, uh, woman there was just kind of a cool juxtaposition of of, of beauty and like savagery uh uh in this uh, uh piece so that's kind of why i picked her up I, I don't usually do that usually i have some sort of nostalgic um connection to to a statue that i buy but for her it was like all aesthetics and then once i bought her uh, i started looking up her character and and it made me uh, uh appreciate the character and the statue even more so again for those of you who are not familiar with the character uh she was introduced in in um top cow comics and has basically uh um sort of appeared in in witchblade and in the darkness um she's done a team up with uh uh lara lara lara, lara croft lara or lara I don't even remember now. Uh, anyways, with uh, with Tomb Raider, and um, essentially what she is, her backstory is that she is a descendant of Mary of Magdalene, and apparently a descendant also of Jesus. In this lore, uh, Mary and Jesus uh, sort of had, were secretly married, and every Magdalena through the generations is of this bloodline, and they're essentially a protector uh, of the Catholic Church, and. Um, uh, there's a few different iterations apparently of her in the comics. I've only ever read the ones that have uh, um, uh, uh, this, what I believe this statue is a representation of. And I think her name is Patience, um, uh, if I remember correctly. And this is the one that teams up with uh, Sarah uh, uh, Pazzini. Is her name Sarah Pazzini? I think so. Uh, which is which is the the, uh, the witch blade that most people know. And they sort of become like a duo. Uh, um, fighting uh, uh, demons and what have you. So uh, Magdalena doesn't have a lot of powers, but the powers that every Magdalena uh, iteration has is they have the ability to um, basically see into a person's heart and then show them uh, uh, the error of their ways and, and their sins and allow them to uh, uh, ask for repentance. Kind of like, I guess a little bit like Ghost Rider in some ways. And uh, uh, this weapon, which is the uh, sword of... Oh man, I can't remember all the terminology now. What is it? The Sword of Destiny? I think it's, or sorry, not Sword. Uh, the Spear of Destiny is is said to be the spear that pierced Christ's side uh, on the crucifixion. So it has the special ability to sort of um, uh, um, uh, counteract uh, uh, evil, and it has the ability to, to kill demons, which most normal uh, uh, weapons wouldn't be able to do. So uh, that is kind of her backstory. Again, a really, really cool story and cool lore. And I love how she ties in with some other uh, uh, characters. She's even done a, um, a uh, uh, sort of a collaboration or a team up with Vampirella, who's another one of my favorite characters. So really, really cool. I bought her for the looks, but uh, um, the reason I'll never let her go is just because of, uh, I mean, it's a mixture of how she looks, but also just her, her story. I think it's cool. So um, without further ado, let's get into the statue. Thanks. So before we actually get into the details of the statue, let's just take a look at what she comes with. So of course she has her handbook with the uh, instructions, the assembly guide, and I, I, I love it when, or I loved it when XM used to do this. Unfortunately now it's all online. Uh, she comes with a separate portrait swap out, which is also beautiful. It's just an unhooded 
portrait and her lipstick is a little bit darker as well. Take a look, really nicely painted, beautiful portrait. I'll show you just that in comparison to the one that she comes with or the one that I have her displayed with. I love the look of that hood, so I don't think I would ever display this one, but it's nice to have the option. And then she comes with a swap out gun hand as well, because she does sometimes use firearms. Mainly she uses uh, um, swords and daggers, as you can see, she's got this beautiful katana um, and another one in its sheath here. Um, and uh, and then she has the, the Spear of Destiny. But like I said, she can also have this, this gun. Uh, I'm not going to switch it out because her cape would need to come off and then I would need to undo a bunch of things to, to do it. But you get the idea. And then as always, she comes with this beautiful art print. Really nice. I actually had to double take because it looked like it was just a photograph of the statue, but it is actually painted. Really nice. I love how they have the uh, this sort of um, sculpture that she comes with in the background there, sort of almost uh, appearing out of the mist or, or, or out of the uh, darkness. Very nice. Okay, so now let's uh, let's look at the statue itself. And um, as I'm sure you've realized by now, it's actually two statues in one, which is pretty crazy. So you get her, the Magdalena, but you also get this companion piece that comes with her, which is a giant um, stone sculpture of of a angel. Maybe it's uh, uh, Archangel Michael. I think I think I read that somewhere, um, defeating a demon here, and this is showing an older version of the Spear of Destiny uh, here. And then of course she's holding the, the, the new iteration of it here. Um, it's pretty crazy because this statue, I mean, I had to buy this statue after after retail. I think I, I bought it off eBay, but it retailed for around 900 bucks American, uh, give or take, which is insane for what you get for this, uh, 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 for that money, for this statue. It had a uh, edition size of, of 500, I believe, which is relatively low. Um, and I guess, you know, partly they were doing lower edition sizes back then, but partly I guess it's just because it's not a, a super popular character, but like what you get for 500 bucks, if, some, if, if someone bought this at the time, uh, uh, for retail, like, wow, what a steal. I would, uh, I would honestly pay near double that to, to have this if I didn't have it already. So let's get into her. As I've already showed, her portrait is beautiful. Nice gloss on the eyes, looks lifelike. Her skin um, has has a bit of like a matte finish to it, uh, which is nice. It gives it a really soft, gentle look. I think that's what I like about this this character. You know, I mentioned earlier that it was sort of a mixture of uh, of um, savagery with beauty, but it, it's not it's not savagery with beauty. It's it's like a serene uh, gentleness mixed with with this sort of a little more savage, you know, with, with weaponry and, and obviously she looks like she's ready for battle, but she has this has this really sort of gentle look to her face. Like you can see a kindness behind her eyes. I really think that was captured well. Um, it's perfect for the character and I love it. Hair is beautifully sculpted. Uh, nice detail in the paint of it. You know, different variations in the in the browns and darker browns. As I said, I love the hood. I think it's a really, really cool look. It gives her a bit of a look of mystery, um, almost like a, a, a druid look, which obviously uh, works, um, uh, or a monk look, which works for the uh, sort of the Catholic theme. Uh, black on top, and then that little pop of red inside is nice accents the rest of the the uh, the outfit. There it is from the side, if I can get it to focus. There we go. And then as we come down, this is, I mean, some of the details of her outfit, this sort of uh, uh, leather outfit with the, with the um, you know, the, the shiny leather ribbing, um, and then the, the, the pops of color with the gold and the reds. Gold and red almost always look so good together, uh, especially on a black backdrop. And this just looks stunning. Again, the sort of softness of her skin, 
Uh, I love little details like this, her arm wrapped up in sort of a, a, a cloth um, coming down to her leather glove. And then as we go up and look at the Spear of Destiny, beautifully detailed, lots of, lots of different tones and colors within the, uh, the, the metal pieces of it. And then obviously that shiny black uh, shaft. So going back to her outfit, uh, the, the shoulder, um, there's a word for these, but essentially the shoulder guards uh, look really nice. There's some nice detailing in them. Again, for, for such a small piece, there are, there are a number of different variations in color in every bit of it, which just look beautiful. You know, like the black cat that I, uh, that I uh, reviewed the other day, um, there's an there's a insane in attention to detail in this that I'm not sure I see as much in the newer XM pieces. Maybe it's just been a while and I haven't reviewed one of them and, and it's there and I just forgot, but like, both of these older XM pieces and just beautifully, beautifully detailed. Look at that. I'm not sure if you guys agree, but I really feel like this character could fit in a uh, Castlevania game. So as you're coming down, I like I like the overlapping pieces of, uh, of um, uh, uh, the outfit here, the leather and then just another piece of leather, another piece of leather, kind of like overlapping. You can see how it was uh, created. Potentially, you know, there's some movement in here to give her movement within this sort of more rigid uh, uh, protective leather outfit. Um, you can see that the pieces actually do overlap. And then there's shows a little bit of skin in the hips so she can have some, some mobility in there. Just the attention to detail and the thought that goes into these outfits. I know part of this is based on, on a comic book uh, uh, version and, and, and some art, but also, I mean, the sculptor has to think about these things and how they're going to translate that uh, when, when creating it in 3D, and I think they did, just did a masterful job uh, coming down into this really cool uh, um, stylized cross for her belt buckle, and then coming over uh, uh, and again, seeing the detail down her legs, this sort of leg protection with straps around the legs to, to hold it in place, and then obviously, these, these hanging um, sword uh, scabbards and, and, and the actual sword itself here uh, hanging on a, on a piece of uh, real um, uh, chain. Very, very cool. Awesome. And then on this leg, we've got a little pouch because again, can't have a superhero without a pouch. Um, this beautifully uh, crafted uh, uh, dagger. And then again, the other katana with the, with the sword, uh, sorry, with the uh, cross on the hilt. And then really nice sculpted uh, sword. Is this metal? I don't know. It might be metal, I can't actually tell, but whatever it is, it looks, looks stunning. And then coming down her legs, I, I didn't mention, but like you can see the way that they've sculpted this le this uh, these legs and even in the arms to really look like leather. The way it's sort of uh, if you go in, just the fine details of the of the, um, the the leather or or what looks like leather. It's just really well done. There's little hints of blues in the blacks as well, which is very subtle, but like it gives it depth and just really makes it look realistic. Again, the strap for the knee pad coming down and then um, the shin guards with that same detail, really ornate, very beautiful. And then down to her shoes. Like I said, the, le the, the level of detail, look at these buckles where these shin guards are strapped on. Um, her nails are painted. Again, it's that mixture of beauty and uh, and, um, and and sort of battle readiness that really impressed me uh, about this piece. So as we come down into the base, I'm even really impressed with the base. I'm not sure what material they've used for this. I know that I know that the majority of, of it is cold cast resin as uh, XM like to use and and it really gives it a nice uh, a crisp look. but there's a lot of variation within the bases even or, or within the base. So this looks, 
it, I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but it has a really, really nice look to it. It really looks like sort of broken up stonework. Um, the detail in the sculpt and in the paint is immaculate. So you've got this piece, kind of like a broken, really detailed column that's, that's, that's broken down that she sort of Captain Morgan posing on. But then this underneath, it, it's, it's hard to explain, but it really looks like, like it's, it's some sort of, um, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a translucent material that they've actually um, put little bits of, of uh, um, like, like a different type of uh, uh, um, material in to, to give it that sort of three-dimensional stone look. But it's, I've never seen this effect before, but it's extremely um, impressive. And it really stands out. I mean, I don't know if you can tell from the from the film, but these look very different. And this stuff down here really looks like a totally different type of brick material compared to the more stone here. Like it looks grainy. It's very granular. I don't know if you you, you can see that, but like it's there's grains that actually look like they're they're built into the uh, into the material. So that's cool. And then as you come up. There's this uh, uh, piece of um, what looks like, uh, obviously, a different, totally different type of stone. Maybe, maybe this is like a marble or something, but a broken wing that's on her base. This is not part of this. It's on her base, so it moves independently as you, as you move this around. But obviously, it is the broken wing from here, which is a really, really cool tie-in of the two pieces together. It really just sort of um, links... The two separate statues and and uh, uh, kind of bring brings them together now obviously you can display her without this back piece they're completely independent but if you have the space this is very high by the way or very very tall uh, that didn't even fit in in the uh, in the display plate cases that I had for her so I kind of had to put him separate beside um, just be aware that you're going to need a lot of space if you want to display both these together. But this piece, if you have the space, really is a nice accent piece to it. And uh, if you can help it, don't leave it in the box. Try and display it because it has a, it has a very different look. It's not, you know, it's fairly uniform. It has some blue, some greens, some grays. Like I said, it looks like maybe a marble, an old weathered marble statue. Um, nice detailing. But like, like uh, I mentioned in my previous uh, review for the uh, Black Cat piece, it, you can, if you look closely, it looks like it's been sort of carved through gouging uh, and, and a, a little, it's a little bit rougher of a sculpt, but intentionally it's meant to look like a sculpted uh, um, piece of art, like a stone or, or, or uh, uh, some, some type of like uh, uh, carved material as opposed to, you know, something organic, which is really nice and smooth. It looks like it is a carved piece of art. And I think that's a really nice detail or feature of this. The face is all sort of weathered. I can see the chain mail in his outfit. And again, you can see that sort of look as though it's been sculpted with it with a chisel. And then coming down to the base. Back, again, there's the cross on it. Here's the uh, slayed or slain demon. And again, really nice detailing up into the back of it. Very, very nice. And then you can see the, uh, the sculpt work in the Magdalena's cape from the back. And some more of the details in the back of her. On the subject of her cape, I, I, I really, really love the subtle movement that it, that it uh, displays. It's not overly dramatic, but you know, she's got her hair blowing slightly in the wind. The cape has that same sort of movement as if it's just you know, small gusts of wind. 
there's just a really nice gentle elegance to this piece um which is why again i truly believe that this is the one of, one of the most underrated statues uh um, out there i understand that most people don't have a connection to this character but if you like this look uh, uh in your in your characters if you like castlevania and you dig that sort of um uh catholic motif in your in in any uh, in in your superheroes um or just if you generally are a um connoisseur of beautiful beautiful artwork when it comes to women depicted in sort of um uh warrior attire i think this is a statue for you and again this is one of those statues that will never leave my uh my collection i love it so thanks again, guys. Uh, please um, uh, give me your comments. Let me know what you think of the statue. Do you know, were you familiar with uh, Magdalena before this video? Uh, let me know where I messed up because I'm sure I got some of the lore wrong. Um, and uh, if you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe. Till then, next time, guys. Until next time, later.